Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and today we're going to be talking about some severe weather that's going to be occurring across New South Wales and Queensland this weekend, some severe weather that's ongoing in Tasmania, Victoria and South Australia this morning, and two major cold fronts that are set to impact the West Australian coastline over the course of the next week, where up to 120 millimetres of rain is expected to continue to break the record-breaking drought that Western Australia is currently being influenced by. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it, your support is greatly appreciated. So we're going to start things off with New South Wales and Queensland, the severe weather that's going on right there. Now, we've got a big cold front sweeping across the centre of the nation. It's so big that you've got to zoom right out to the whole of Australia to take a look at it on the satellite picture. It is a monster, let me tell you, and it is uh, packing quite a lot of rainfall as well. Communities such as Tennant Creek and Alice Springs right up in the territory expecting up to 50 millimetres of rainfall from this weather event to fall, which is certainly going to be pushing those rivers towards the minor or moderate flooding alerts. There's also quite a lot of rainfall expected to sweep into New South Wales. 115 millimetres has already fell, uh, fell in parts of Victoria and the mountainous areas and some of that is just starting to continue to fall now in some of the southeastern parts of New South Wales. It looks like it will slowly ease off throughout the course of today though but just looking at this cloud right now it is a massive cold front moving through very very strong indeed and it is packing a lot of rainfall which you can see here on the 12 hour radar loop. It is sweeping through the uh, capital territory right now. Uh, uh, and it's about to move further up the coast in New South Wales. Sydney expecting 15 millimetres of rain from this weather event. Nothing too crazy, but the real deal for Sydney and the coastal parts of New South Wales is going to come later this weekend when this cold front gets itself offshore, which you can see it starts to do tonight and into tomorrow. The back end of it sweeps up towards Queensland as well. Southeast Queensland and northeast New South Wales can expect 25 millimetres or so of rainfall tomorrow, especially into the afternoon and evening hours from a couple of storms that will blow through the area. And then the this cold Cold front here develops into a low pressure area between Lord Howe Island and the New South Wales coastline. It looks like it drives quite a lot of rainfall ashore onto the coastal parts of New South Wales around Sydney. Newcastle and Foster, they could be looking at up to 25 or 30 millimetres of rainfall on Saturday alone before it really sets in Sunday morning and into early Sunday afternoon where more rainfall is expected there. But this is classic East Coast low formation right here. I would not call this an East Coast low right now or definitely not one in the forecast just because of the uncertainty regarding the forecast. But a low pressure system, a powerful low pressure system setting itself up offshore from New South Wales. I mean, that is an East Coast low by definition. Um, and and it looks like it's going to be quite strong in terms of wind speeds and rainfall as well and what rainfall accumulations it dumps. It'll be at its strongest Sunday evening before weakening off throughout the early hours of Monday. Showers and storms still expected to occur across Victoria and Tasmania. In fact, Tasmania are really expecting quite a bit of rainfall from this Monday afternoon and into Tuesday morning along the eastern coast. We're up to 30 millimetres is possible, which is quite a lot for Tasmania, especially the eastern coast of it. They rarely get more than 30 millimetres in a 24 hour Hour period. They get a lot of rainfall, but it's not often heavy because of the mountainous uh, nature of Tasmania, just blocking all of that rainfall. But I mean, just look at this storm line up here, um, just offshore from southeast Queensland and the northern parts of New South Wales. It's not overland, thank goodness, because these are some strong storms here, but areas along the coastline, they're at risk of getting heavy showers and slow moving heavy showers at that, which could dump 25 to 30 or even 40 millimetres of rain within a one hour period. And you, you guys know the weather up in southeast and Queensland. Line. You know what I'm talking about here, but still uh, be vigilant when driving, be vigilant uh, because there could be some big puddles on the roads, there could be some damaging winds as well, especially Sunday afternoon from the storms that might blow through. Um, and yeah, flooding is a small possibility, but still a possibility from the rainfall that is going to be falling up there because it will be falling in an intense nature. It will come down in torrential downpours. In terms of peak rainfall accumulations for New South Wales and Sydney over the next, I believe, uh, it's not going to be all occurring in that time frame because it's going to stick around for a little bit uh, longer but still quite a lot of rainfall expected over the next 10 days where we're going to be looking at from this system and a system later on next week which the forecast is relatively uncertain for up to 200 millimeters of rainfall again the majority of it staying offshore or the worst of it staying offshore Newcastle is still expecting 100 millimeters or 130 millimeters Sydney Metro expecting about 150 but inland towards Penrith that rainfall drops sharply to about 70 millimeters Wollongong expecting about 100 
100 to 110 millimetres and then down towards the New South Wales Victoria border. Mallacoota expecting about 20 millimetres and Aruma about 20 millimetres as well. A little bit further north towards Batemans Bay, you're still looking at 20 to th uh, 30 or even 40 millimetres or so. So still quite a lot of rainfall is expected to occur. However, yeah, it's still quite uncertain in terms of timing and also location on the little area that's going to be happening later on in the season. And also a little bit of uncertainty regarding uh, the rainfalls location for this cold front that's coming through, or this east coast low type system that's coming through this weekend and into early next week. Uh, but yeah, it still could be a very big rainfall dumper, especially for the east coast of Tasmania. I know the Eastern Rebirth forecast model isn't expecting it, but the GFS model and also the Axis G3, in fact, especially the Axis G3 model, expecting a lot of rainfall to fall on the east coast of Tasmania. And that certainly is a possibility at this time. The Axis G3 model expecting a whopping 170 to 180 millimetres to be falling around St. Helens, St. Mary's, right down towards um, uh, Bishno and Coles Bay. A lot of rainfall is expected there. Uh, in fact, it's one of those rare examples where you're seeing more rainfall fall on the east coast of Tasmania than on the west coast, which is entirely possible from this weather system. But just keep in mind that the Axis G3 does dramatically overestimate rainfall more often than not. I mean, it's got 400 millimetres here sitting offshore from Sydney, and I don't think that's going to be happening, not even even from two weather systems like that. Now, it is an East Coast law on the forecast, so of course I'd love to talk about the wind uh, forecast as well, because those wind gusts are going to be quite high, especially from Sunday onwards. Along the uh, Sydney coastline, we're expecting winds to be averaging around 50 to 60 kilometres an hour, gusting to around 70 to 80 kilometres an hour. Certainly the chance of some damaging winds through the Sydney metro area as well, so make sure you are staying safe and being vigilant. Uh, broken uh, power lines is probably not a possibility, actually, in this kind of weather. 100 kilometres an hour isn't that much in the grand scheme of things, but certainly the risk of falling trees, falling tree branches, and um, the throwing around of some outdoor furniture. So once again, make sure you are staying safe. The core of this system is going to be quite strong, actually. It's going to have peak winds of around 110 kilometers an hour, but thankfully it doesn't look like they get themselves over land. The east coast of Tasmania, though, expecting some strong winds to occur throughout Monday and Tuesday. I mean, just look at the Tasman Sea as well on Tuesday morning. It's a right mess, that's for sure, as this low pressure system moves towards New Zealand. Quite a strong one by the looks of things getting into the 990 millibar sort of pressure threshold so it is certainly quite strong and those wave heights Monday and Tuesday are going to be big throughout all of the Tasman Sea and even towards the New South Wales coastline at least two or three meters so make sure you are exercising caution if you are in and around the water I would not recommend being in the water though early next week that is for sure but yeah certainly some good rainfall to break the drought in terms of current weather as well for Tasmania they're currently under a severe weather warning the whole nation of it they're expecting a, a good helping of rainfall today certainly a good helping of wind as this powerful cold front blows through. Victoria as well has had some great rainfall overnight and fortunately it seems like Western Australia has uh, cursed it. They've had a little bit too much rainfall in some locations and it's all just become runoff and flooded all the rivers through there unfortunately. And it also looks like South Australia has had a couple of drops of good rainfall too overnight, especially in the northern corner of it. Uh, in terms of rainfall accumulation over the next 10 days though it's a pretty ugly picture. Uh, only a couple of drops here and there for the Air Peninsula and around Adelaide. Unfortunately the rainfall is not going to be too high. Uh, they've kind of had their helping of the rainfall and it looks like it is over for the next 10 days, but it would be fantastic if a big cold front can sweep up from the bite and give them a nice helping of rainfall because they really do deserve it. They're not currently in full-blown drought conditions right now. However, the south coast is certainly struggling with some dry weather um, and it's not helping the fact that there is very limited rainfall through there, um, even in towards Victoria as well. They're not out of the drought yet. They've had some good rainfall, especially in the uh, northeastern parts of Victoria, but the west still desperately needs some good rainfall. But overall, this picture of Australia, it's looking a lot more normal for a year where we're only seeing minor to mild drought conditions across about 10 to 20 percent of the nation and then just one or two pockets of severe to exceptional drought conditions. And that leads us very nicely into the rainfall story for Western Australia because it is a mean one. Thankfully, though, they are starting to come out of this catastrophic drought that we have been seeing. And this is the front here that's next on the forecast to impact us currently today. We're expecting a couple of showers as well. Tomorrow morning, a few showers here and there, but the real rainfall will be setting in later Saturday afternoon. I've just skipped straight forward to lunchtime Saturday, 12 p.m. Uh, Australian Western Standard Time. We're going to be looking at some strong weather coming through from about then onwards. It looks like this front begins to cross the coast around 9 or 10 p.m., maybe a little bit later, actually. The forecast has been pushing it back over the last couple of days, so probably 11 to 12 uh, a.m. as well, Sunday morning, and that's why the majority of the rainfall has been shifting 
shifted over to the Sunday forecast. But yeah, an awful lot of rainfall is expected from this weather system. It is going to be a nasty one. Uh, damaging winds as well is the main threat, uh, well, one of the main threats, but there's heavy rainfall. This is going to go severe warn for heavy rainfall, which is quite un um, uncommon for West Australian cold fronts. Normally, they just don't have enough rainfall in them to go severe warned. But I mean, just look at this rainfall here. Heavy rainfall extending as far north as Geraldton, Calbarry and Northampton, um, and right down the coastline as well, right down towards Bunbury, Bustleton. They're expecting some torrential rainfall to come through from Saturday afternoon. But yeah, just rolling this back, it's going to come through in the evening hours uh, for the Southwest Capes, Margaret River and Augusta, expecting it from 7pm. Bunbury expecting it from about 8 or 9pm. Mantra from about 10 and then the Perth Metro from 11 to 12 onwards. And this rainfall will not get out of the Perth Metro area until probably about 5 or 6 a.m. the next morning, maybe even a little bit later than that when those showers begin to take over. So we're talking about six hours of potentially 10 to 20 millimetres per hour. You do the math on that and up to 100 millimetres is possible and a little bit more in one or two locations. I would not be surprised if we see um, up to 100 or 120 millimetres of rainfall come through for some locations. This is a very powerful cold front in terms of rainfall coming through, not so much in terms of wind, but there's going to be a lot of evaporation over the coming couple of days because the sea surface temperatures are so warm still in the Lewin current and it looks like that is the reason why there is going to be so much rainfall and it penetrates deep into the wheat belt as well beyond Beverly and the Southwest Highway right in towards uh, communities such as Corrigan uh, even up towards Meriden as well and even Beacon expecting to get some good rainfall by the looks of things. Um, and as you get further inland into the goldfield, Southern Cross expecting some good rainfall as well. Even Kalgoorlie expecting some rainfall out of this weather event. And it looks like it kind of stops um, on the edge of the wheat belt. So the whole of the wheat belt expecting at least 20 to 30 millimetres of rainfall. I'd be surprised if locations missed out on it because it will be just such a widespread and big weather system. And then behind it, Sunday morning, it looks like, or Sunday morning into early afternoon, some showers and storms come through for the Perth metro area. They look like they could be quite nasty, however, easing off uh, for the start of Monday. There's no rainfall on the forecast, well, no real significant rainfall on the forecast for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday as we get back into the swing of things next week. And it looks like the rainfall will be dying down until the next big cold front comes through. But let's take a look at rainfall accumulations because they are going to be big. I think the Eastern World here is actually underestimating it um, on their forecast. They're only saying 40 to 50 millimetres of rainfall for the Perth metro area. I think the Axis G3 has a much better number in mind. At least 100 millimetres is possible, that's for sure. I'd be surprised if this weather system didn't drop 50 millimetres in the Perth metro area. It is a big cold front coming through. Uh, there's going to be a lot of rainfall in it and it's going to be occurring over a long period of time. So it's going to be a loud, windy night on Saturday night, so make sure you are uh, hunkered down inside, enjoying the uh, front from a window or from the couch or something like that because it is going to be a big weather system. The GFS as well, not predicting too much rainfall, but that's mainly because of model resolution. But I think the Eastern Reef here is dramatically underestimating it, which is fine. The Eastern Reef can underestimate rainfall here and there. The Axis G3, generally the overestimator, but I do reckon that this is the possible scenario right now. There's going to be one place around the Perth metro area that picks up 100 millimetres. There's really no two ways about it. So Flash flooding is certainly a risk. We're going to be waking to a lot of big puddles on Monday morning, so take it very uh, carefully on those roads Sunday and Monday. Uh, there could also be a lot of debris around because the wind gusts, although they won't be up towards 80 or 90 kilometres an hour like they normally are in these cold fronts, they still will be quite strong, especially Sunday afternoon, so make sure you are taking care uh, there. And wave heights as well are going to be really big Sunday afternoon in the wake of this cold front, potentially up towards 6 or 7 metres offshore. So once again, Boating is an absolute no-go, that is for sure. Now let's talk about this big cold front that's coming through later on next week. Thursday and Friday we're talking about more rainfall sweeping up from the south and impacting the Perth metro area in the southwest as a whole of Western Australia. It is a big cold front. It's not as big as the one that's coming through this weekend but still a lot of rainfall is possible. A further 30 or 40 millimetres is definitely a possibility but it's going to be one of those fronts that sweeps up from the south which means the shower pool behind it is going to be non-existent but it looks like another big cold front comes through Saturday afternoon. This one looks pretty nasty 
Kowalski as well. But considering it is still about a week away on the forecast, the uncertainty does remain quite high. I'm really hoping that this doesn't happen because I'm hosting a party on Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening and I would <laughs> love it if it didn't rain, but that does look like what is going to be happening at this time. The forecast models seem pretty certain with it. However, still a week away, so holding out for hope here. But whatever the Eastern Relief has on board for the forecast here, this monstrous shower pool sweeping in from the south, that looks really nasty. And when we're talking about wind gusts here up towards 90 or 100 kilometers an hour even. So whatever the Eastman Rift has, I really hope doesn't materialize because that does look quite nasty. And the Axis G3 here, whoa, this has a storm of the century on the forecast here. Wind gusts up towards 130 kilometers an hour. This is a monstrous low pressure system coming through here. Thankfully, it looks like it sweeps to the south um, but yeah, it really does look like a nasty low pressure system, unfortunately. Um, but I don't think that's going to materialize. The Access G3 can call for some absolutely crazy things. Um, but yeah, that is kind of what is, well, that's kind of the gist of the forecast right now in the southwest corner of Western Australia. It's a pretty hectic one in terms of winter weather. Hoping the Saturday system holds out just for the, for the kind of festivities, but it doesn't look like it's going to. We've got a lot of rainfall coming through this weekend as well. So make sure you are staying safe and taking extra care on the roads. Now, I do still feel like we have to go and talk about our friend, the Tropical Low over here on top of Seabreeze Village, south of the Maldives. We've been talking about this system for the last couple of days. I mean, it is well away from Australia at this time. Uh, you can see the system over here and the Australian continent over here. So it's still about four or 5,000 nautical miles away. But it has been doing a reasonably good job over the past 12 hours to try and get itself together. It's the center of the storm right here, and it definitely looks like it might become a tropical low briefly today. And the chance of a tropical cycle is there. It's not necessarily high, but it is certainly there. It is trying to rotate itself around. It's trying to blow up a consistent stack of convection. And I am surprised that the forecast models haven't really cottoned onto this, apart from the uh, GFS forecast model, which is calling for a full-blown tropical load to develop out of this system. And they've already got it right now, but over the coming couple of days, it looks like the GFS is trying to form something by Sunday or Monday as it gets towards the Seychelles Islands, but certainly nothing tropical cyclone in nature and certainly nothing too is strong, that's for sure. But yeah, just an interesting thing. It shows that you can have cyclones at any time of the year in the Southern Hemisphere offshore from Australia. And it is a good indicator of what is on the forecast in future about seven days in advance for Australia. It shows us if there's tropical cyclone activity over Madagascar uh, or Africa, it shows us that we could be potentially getting some tropical cyclone activity our way or in the winter months more necessarily. Uh, in the winter months, to be honest, uh, we could be getting some thunderstorm activity or some stronger thunderstorm activity over the north of our nation. So everything ties in very nicely with each other. And also about this time, we've got a typhoon just passing by to, uh, Japan, Typhoon Air and Air, or I mean the remnants of Air and Air, it's done an absolutely amazing job at completely ripping itself apart as it approaches Japan. You wouldn't be able to tell this, where this system is if I just told you to point it out on this map, but it is located right here, that very ill-defined swirl here passing up towards Japan and Tokyo at this time. Uh, thankfully, it isn't a threat to land because it has been ripped apart so dramatically by, its, uh, by itself and wind but still a couple of heavy showers are possible on the Japanese islands, especially of Honshu and around the Tokyo metro area. But the Ryukyu Islands and the Agusawara Islands dodged a, not a bullet, but they did dodge a typhoon impact. So that was some very good news indeed. The system did really well next to the Philippines, but it did an awful job once it got away from the Philippines and it did a, oh, tore, tore itself apart basically overnight. And that's why it does not look impressive at all today. Anyways, we're really starting to waffle on here about the tropics that really don't matter for the Australian weather forecast. If you have enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on it while you're at it. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run this show without them and their support is much appreciated. But that is all from me and I'll catch you on the next film. Goodbye.